Hey everybody, good morning. This is Daniel and this is Morning Tea. How's everybody doing? Doing your tea this morning? Oh. I let mine sit a little too long. It's a little cold now. Yucky. But <laughs> um, happy Memorial Day. Uh, let's start with that. Happy Memorial Day. Um, I know I have several, several friends uh, that are or were in the military. And uh, one particular friend, uh, Lauren, really... Uh, I love you, brother. Thank you for everything you did. Uh, I've heard some of the stories, and uh, thank you. Thank you for all the service, and to all the military uh, families out there who have uh, who have family serving overseas or, or anywhere. Um, my prayers are with you. Um, I wish you nothing but love and good vibe, and. Uh, Let's, let's get this started. Let's uh, start off. It's an emotional day, isn't it? I'm sorry, I'm pulling up the cards from my little tote bags that I got at the Chakra Shack. So if you're in Laguna Beach and you're looking for little tote bags for your cards, come to the Chakra Shack and they have all you need. So let's get started while I go through the cards. Emptiness becomes openness. Sometimes a loss can be a gain. While it is always important to honor what we've lost, sometimes a loss can also represent a chance for a new beginning. When we lose anything that we cherish, the sense of emptiness we are left behind can be overwhelming. A space that was filled, whether in our lives or in our hearts, is now void, and the feeling of pain, loss, and separation can sometimes be difficult to bear. While it is always important to honor what we've lost, sometimes a loss can also represent a chance for a new beginning. When we are ready, to the void left by a relationship, a job, or a dream, can then be viewed as an open space that can be filled with something. New experiences, new knowledge, new job, opportunities, new dreams, new people, and new ways to grow. There are many ways to weave the threads of loss into a blessing. If you lost a job or ended a relationship, your first thought may be, I'm sorry, your first thoughts may be revolved around filling the void with a similar job or the same kind of relationship. Try not to rush into anything just to fill up the emptiness. The loss of a job can free you up to explore new opportunities, especially if you've got grown the old one. Likewise, the loss of a relationship can give you a chance to rediscover your own interests, explore new passions, and meet different people. If seeking the good in what seems like a bad situation makes you feel uncomfortable, then try to remember that you are not devaluating what you've lost or replacing it cold-heartedly. You are surrendering to the fact that, in life, we sometimes have to let go and allow for what is new to enter into the open spaces created by our losses. Ooh, I think that's part of the important things, right? Let me, let me go back on that one. You are surrendering to the fact that, in life, we sometimes have to let go and allow for what is new to enter in the open spaces created by our losses. In doing so, you are honoring what has left you and welcoming the new into your life with open space and open mind and open heart. Say that again. In doing so, you are honoring what has left you and welcoming the new into your life with open space, an open mind, and an open heart. Um Losses, wow. Uh, <laughs> why did I get quiet? Because uh, definitely through my life uh, in, in, in addiction, there were uh, many things that I lost in my life, of course. Uh, apartments, material stuff, apartment, car, uh, friendships were gone. And uh, and not just that they weren't there for me anymore. Uh, during my addiction, I lost friends too. Uh, where am I going with this? Uh, I've had to give up a lot in my recovery. I think this is where I'm going with this. I think. God, help me with the words here. Um, there's a thing that they say in... We say in AA, people, places, and things. You need to replace people, places, and things. Here, that's where I'm going. And 
in my recovery, I have had to do that. I have had to cut off places that I shouldn't be anymore, people that are just not good to be around me anymore, and things that I just don't need, that all those things together can direct me back into a world of addiction. And I'm not saying that you're an addict, but if all your life you've had a relationship with men or women who are abusive and belittle you and hurt you and make you feel bad, and they're gone, and it's time to go in another direction. I had relationships. I had some really good relationships. I had guys who were really good to me. But I never quite felt valued. Um, I am a kid at heart, and I need that to be acknowledged. There are things in my life that I really enjoy doing. And I am finding people that value that, that recognize that for what it is. Um, my career, I need to be validated. Now in that also, I have to find a partner that needs and requires that so that we can mesh together, you know? Um, I think this ties into Friday's reading about letting go of people that are negative in your life. If you don't get rid of that negative, you're, you know, our, our, I believe it's a bowl, and if you don't take out anything bad, you can't replace it with anything good. You've got to do it. It's not easy to do, just like losing people in your life that have been there for you forever, but are negative. Same here. If you don't get rid of all that negative stuff that's filling up your bowl, you're never going to be able to fill up with anything good. Now, the catch is make sure that what you put back in there is good for you. It's filled with light and positive and that you're ready for it. You are ready to make that change and you are going to commit it. Not to anybody else. You are going to commit to yourself. Like I work on doing. Um, that's why now for partners, for, for a relationship, I am seeking somebody that understands and values where, where my heart comes from. If that makes any sense. Woo! What a great way to start the week, right? We're just changing and getting rid of all that gunk in our life and getting something new. So this time... So my angels are, are telling me, uh, I'm going to go with this one. We've, we've seen this one before. Clergynescence, clergynescence, right? Is that, am I saying that right? Um, Archangel Aurel says, pay attention to thoughts and ideas that come to you as they are answered prayers. What a great day, Memorial Day. When we are uh, honoring um, all our soldiers. And you have a lot of time to uh, be with yourself and think. This is a great time to uh, pay attention. What's going on in your head? There's something you've been thinking about? It's racing in there? Pay attention to it. Those are your prayers coming through. Just think of what it is. Let's go with this one. You are glorious. You see that? You are glorious. So that's why your answers are being prayer. Because you are a glorious person and God loves you. And uh, so pay attention to those thoughts. And remember that you're gorgeous. Just on a day to day. And uh, my, what am I grateful for today? I am grateful for all the uh, men and women in the armed forces. And uh, I feel a little bad because Saturday I went out to dinner with a friend, and there were two ladies in uniform. And my first instinct was to stop and say thank you. And I chickened out. I walked out of the restaurant without saying anything to them. And they were right by the door. And there was my perfect opportunity to thank them. And I didn't do it. And uh, I, if this makes the round, I was at, uh, I think it was Los Sanchez restaurant in Santa Ana. Um, if anybody remembers those ladies there, thank you, ladies. Thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you, everybody in the military. So today I am grateful for them. Uh, God bless you. Have a great Monday. Uh, love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.